What's up, what's up, everybody? This is Ruthless Babylon by Sid Perry. We are talking to the king tonight about his movements around the world, his world tour, his EP. We're talking about his EP tonight. Yes, that's the gold EP. This is the track of the song Ruthless Babylon, the song of the EP, that is. everybody joining us worldwide on the radio come over and join us on instagram join the conversation with sid perry tonight share the link with your friends and family Drop the flag in the chat. <laughs> Let me know where you're coming from. I've seen people from all over the world, even Costa Rica, join us uh, <laughs> recently as well on our Insta Live. So bring up all the Ruby family worldwide. I'm waiting for Sid to join us. Love and strength and happiness. Big up Rasta Lava 3 on Instagram here. Thank you everyone for joining us, whether you're tuned in on the radio or here on the live. I'm going to try to get Sid Perry, Nazi Conqueror, all right, Divine. Shout out to you, New York City, representing. All right, everybody from New York. <laughs> Babylon. <laughs> yeah, man. Tell me how your week is starting off. Has Monday been good for y'all? Let me know. I think spring has sprung here in Toronto, so, you know, hopefully the cold weather is behind us. Hopefully all y'all are feeling well and nice. Going spring has arrived. What's up all the lovers of reggae music worldwide? If you love reggae music, put some hearts up in the comment section, some hearts and some fire emojis. It's here. So it is here, so we're going to start the conversation. We're going to talk about his movements. Like I said in the intro, we're going to learn more about the king tonight, learn more about what inspires him as well. <laughs> if you're joined in on the radio, come over and join us on Instagram Live to join the conversation live here. I'm excited for tonight. Sid! Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, how are you? Bless, how's the eye? Blessed love. Let me just check the track, the, the levels here. Perfect, your level is perfect. I'm excited to see you tonight. I'm excited to reason with you on life and, you know, of course, your music and the messages in your music. Uh, we're also broadcasting live on the radio. So uh, I, I talked to my my radio people as well as talk to people here that join us on Instagram which is always lovely because they can interact and ask questions at the end with you as well so I'm excited to get talking about you know your gold EP some of the tracks as well on the on the EP and also about you know what you've been up to it's been a while since we we caught up here from here in Toronto so for everyone who might not know you might be Seeing you for the first time, tell them in your own words who Sid Perry is. Uh, Sid Perry is a, 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 a musical revolutionary, you know. Yeah, Rastafari from creation, you know. 
here to, to here to use the word sound and power of the most high through music to uplift and enlighten and empower indigenous people worldwide yes. so important uh your messages in your music talk a lot of you know topics that need to be discussed and your perspective as well as a world's perspective a society's perspective and you have a lot of great visuals to go along with the music on your YouTube page. I did take a look at your YouTube and, you know, the visuals are well done. They're stunning images and they all speak. Images also speak a thousand words in a way. But I love to start at your roots and your foundation about, you know, your family life growing up. How was that for you? Sorry, say the last part again there. I lost you there. How was your family life growing up for you to start at your roots? Well, you know, um, family life growing up, um, it was, it was ireful, you know, um, getting experience in both Jamaica and Canada as a child, you know, from birth. Um, my, my mother is the Jamaican, my father was from Canada and he was a blues musician, you know, so he gave me the, the, the knowledge of music. Um, guitar, harmonica, all them something I get from him from an early age, you know. And then my sister, who is my mother's daughter, she's a professional singer, dancer, and actress. So it was a constant inspiration, you know, between my sister and my father. So you were definitely a musically inclined family with your father, uh, also doing music. Your sister is also an artist. And I did share, you know, a little clip from that collaboration and the work of art that you put out together, the Lover's Rock track, I, I loved it. It was beautiful. Her voice is beautiful. I love to see that brother-sister, you know, collab. Give thanks. Yeah, it was, a, it was a, a dream come true to work with her, you know. Um, been a vision since I was a youth to, to incorporate my sister in some of my music somehow, you know. So it's a blessing to my manifest that yes it was very beautiful such a beautiful performance and with your musical mission with your messages there's so many of them which we'll get to some of them tonight what do you want people to feel when they listen to your music well we don't want them to feel nothing with them not feel naturally when they listen to it you know it's just it's just a natural thing you know okay. so um, you know, if everyone has different experiences in life, but can also relate to a certain degree. So, you know, I just wanted to affect people the way it naturally would, you know, for those who can um, relate and resonate to, to naturally, you know, tune in. Yes. And there's so much natural vibes. You show a lot of nature. You show yourself in nature. Um, you know, the natural vibes, the Rastafari vibes, you know, the Japra will provide. There's lots of naturalness in in how you, um, you know, do your delivery as well as your lyrics and as well as the video that goes with the tracks. Um, yeah, I, I watched all of them. They're all beautifully shot, like I said. And I want to get into, you know, your gold EP. Tell me about concept production you know when did the idea come to birth for you how was that in the creative process the gold ep well um you know the gold ep is is part of a set um a ep trilogy is red gold and green so really um each one has a different concept and theme and vibe you know um red was the first to come out with a with a theme theme and concept of, of love in every capacity, you know, um, one love, universal love, you know, um, the love of a, between a, a king and a queen, that's Rasta woman, you know, and the love for the creator of all things, which is Hail Rasta Farai. And gold, the concept differ in a sense where it's more based around corruption and oppression. So if you, if you notice the tracks on gold, you know, every one of them is, is speaking out against that in some form, you know whether it be stereotype, ruthless Babylon, food security, slack music, you know, propaganda. Yes. 
world recorded in Japanese. Sorry. The theme is definitely evident in the gold EP, and and also the theme in the red EP is is very clear as well. Um, you got that across in a, in a fabulous artistic way. And we're excited to obviously, we expect that there will be a green EP coming. Yes, that is um, to come, you know. Uh, did some work on that in South Africa and still have uh, some, some finishing touches and things to do towards it. So just take, take doing things in, in divine time, you know, not trying to push right now the EP then. Blessing to see it manifest into a moment. This is a long time in the making. All right, so we're excited to see the theme and the and your creative work come to fruition with the green EP coming. Let's talk about the tracks now. Some of them on the EP. I was playing "Ruthless Babylon" on the intro before you joined us here on the live. Tell me about you know the message in there and also. Um, how that came to be? How did the idea spark for you? Well, that's a good question, but it's one of those ones where it just kind of come to be. You know? um, I I feel the true, you know. I was kind of in a mid, and maybe I did kind of observe how Babylon is like. It's everywhere, you know, in everything. It's in in this time, in 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 this in this day. It's everywhere you look. It's rampant, you know, um, more than ever, you know, in the music, in the food, everywhere you look. Every time you turn on something or tune into something, that's what they're they're they're, they're force feeding, you, you know, is corruption and propaganda and other things and stereotypes that way in the media. So it just it was like, you know, every time you turn on the radio, you know, it's like music, and especially in Jamaica, and more time, you know, than, than the roots. So it was like, I have to put out a song that can counteract that in a way, you know? Put that on black. Can you hear me? You froze up yeah. for a second there. Last time for a second. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I can hear you, yes. And the thing about the songs and the, how they co are cohesive, they work together, Slack music, in a way, is like a way for them to make, you know, you fall into certain stereotypes. If you listen to this music, it's like a propaganda. Like All of the songs, even the titles, they all relate, um, and they tell the story. I get the message across very well. Let me let me ask you about the instruments that you play. Um, how did it come with the harmonica? Like, what made you decide to pick up the harmonica? So the harmonica, um, my father was a blues musician. He was a blues man. So my father played the 12-string guitar, the same type of guitar that I play today, and uh, the harmonica. And so, but he, he would play them one at a time, you know, blues style, you know. And so I grew up around that music like from birth. I grew up around that one called the acoustic guitar. And I, I, I remember when I first asked my father to, to show me how to play the harmonica, maybe about 13 years old, you know. Sometimes I had already been picking it up for a while here and there because it's always around in, in the place. But around that time, 13 years, same time, I asked him to teach me the guitar. I asked him to show me some things on the harmonica. And he said, for the harmonica, he said, the harmonica cannot be taught. It can only be felt. And, and so he never showed me nothing. He just gave me one. I was just didn't figure it out. And I don't know. Before I, I even really realized it, it was my main instrument. You know? And it was like, it took me everywhere I went, you know. And from that time, straight through, I never stopped playing the harmonica. So I just knew that. Whatever I do in music, that's going to be a part of it because that's a part of who I am. And so when I start to play the two instruments together, you know, the harmonica and the guitar at the same time, that's when I really start to become conscious through meditation that my roots are roots are again blues. So 
that became my my signature song, my identity, everything, uh, because it was a musical representation of my my existence. <laughs> I love your use of the of your different instruments that you play, and I love the harmonica. Um, when you're putting together a song, or 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 you're coming with an idea, do you do the production? Are you playing the harmonica? You know, is the melody coming to you, um, and before the lyrics come to you, or you know, are you humming something, or just playing the guitar? Tell me about your creative process. Well, I really, I I. I stopped writing music um, a long time ago. I just channel music, you know. That's that's how I deal with it personally. You know? but, but I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm here to give people what I think they need, what what I want them to hear or what I think they want to hear. I'm just here to to deliver a message, a message that needs to be heard. You know, so. I more just try to channel than write, you know? and so music comes in all different ways. Sometimes the lyrics will come first, sometimes the rhythm will come first, sometimes they come hand in hand because I'm there with my guitar, writing with my guitar, and heads in with the guitar, and the rhythm and the lyrics are coming one time, like my song, Tree Without Roots, you know? So every time is a little bit. Um, I don't try to force anything. Like I say, just let it come natural. I love the message and stereotype and, um, you know, people, I think it's important for people to be able to break free of certain stereotypes, how people might perceive them. And we all know the old saying, you know, never judge a book by its cover. Um, how can, how do you think one person can rise above uh, given or perceived stereotypes of who they might be and you know how big of a part do you think media music society plays in giving those stereotypes in the first place well I think the best way to rise above stereotype is to be true to who you know yourself to be if you know yourself from you know yourself then you already don't rise above stereotype because you, you, you're going to fulfill a uh, uh, purpose within yourself. So, no matter what the stereotype is, one and ones are going to have to acknowledge eventually. The world is going to have to acknowledge eventually. People are going to have to acknowledge eventually that there is more to you than what they thought. There is more to just judging a book by its cover, you know. So, um, that's that's why I, I understand that from my personal experience, you know. Um, and then now in terms of the media and saying, well, you know, everyone has an agenda, really, because everyone has an intention, you know, and some people have good intentions and bad intentions. And we don't know from a long time, the system don't have no good intentions, especially for original people, um, African people, as we say. You know? So <clears throat> that's, that's the truth and that's the reality, and we know that and we see that every day especially in in the west and you know in in the east they have a they have their own set of propaganda in the media and stereotypes in the media you know to, to keep down the, the minds of these melanated people of these carbonated african people the original people It's, per it's important to know thyself, as you mentioned, um, in society and to be in order to be able to let go or rise above, so to speak, of stereotypes that might be brought upon you um, based on, you know, people's perceptions of you. So that's some really great uh, feedback from you and, as, and your perspective. Thank you for sharing your perspective on that tonight. I do want to talk about, you know, the music video in honor of King Maui Yabahari. Is that how you say his name? I hope I'm getting yeah. that right. Maui Yabahari, yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. Honoring him, and it was shot as well in Toronto. Um, I could tell by the visuals. Tell me about how important that video was for you. 
um, and as well, you know, the concept and how that came to life. Well, um, the video was more important to me than I could I could describe to you in this in this time frame because Maui Bahari was more important, significant to me than I can describe, you know. Um where it's just feel like that for sure. Because um that origin changed my life ten times, you know, and still to this day, you know, is is one of the greatest lessons that I ever experienced in my life was to trot with that virgin and all that virgin. Um, that video, the entire mission from that point forward and even before, but you know, more like, tenfold, you know, from that that moment onward was was very important to me. Um, in in his honor, you know, um, just true who I know him to be. And through the mission that I knew we were on together, you know. So, okay. <laughs> you know, that, that question too deep. That question too deep. But, yeah, it was, it was definitely a, a, a revolution with it. Revolution. That's what that experience was. Thank you for sharing that. And that's such a beautiful honor that you could do from obviously clearly um you know a soulmate of sorts that's meant a lot to you and on your journey uh, it's a beautiful you well done video and obviously it means even more than what maybe you thought originally it would have meant at the time i want everyone to go over and check out the stereotype music video on the sid perry reggae youtube page uh, he will also be sharing all the rest of his social media links. If anyone has a question, I do give an opportunity at the very end of our reasoning tonight for questions from one or two of the Instagram members. I won't take any questions from Twitter tonight because it's a little distracting. I try to focus on the Instagram questions. So if you do have a question for Sid, there's a little question box on the right hand bottom of your screen there. You can put your question in there and I will ask what I can. Um, thank you for sharing those inner thoughts. And yes, Joe appeared, inner depths of the soul. Tell me about your spiritual journey. It's a part of uh, Melody Mondays. It's something I, you know, like to dive deep into um, with guests, uh, artists that come and reason on the on the Monday night here. The vibe is usually pretty deep, so we do get into a little bit of that. Tell me something that you might have learned, maybe something that happened to you on your own experience and your own soul's journey that changed your perspective uh, completely on life and liberty. All right, well, the, the answer right away, um, in part, is the answer to the last question, which is my alive, you know, in terms of really a, a life-changing you know, experience, you know, on this journey. But in going back, um, my sister went to, my, my big sister went to Morocco, when not the singer, but the one I know, my, my eldest sister, she went to Morocco when I was a youth, and she brought part of the drum, uh, you know, and it was really, she gave it to me. It was the first drum I ever had. You know? And, you know, for me, it was, it was sacred. It was from the motherland. You know, I didn't touch it. I didn't put it. I just put it on the top shelf of my room. You know? And it was just really special to me. You know? And it wasn't until my grandfather came to visit me, you know. And, and it was an honor for it. Yeah. Grandfather, you know, from Jamaica, he, you know, he, he loved the song that I was making from the drum. You know, he told me to keep it, but I, I never knew what I was doing. I never played a drum before. You know, I just picked it up and felt like I have to play it for him. And you know, it, for going forward in my meditation, it showed me the experience that, you know, how do I know to play this drum already without knowledge of it. I must come from where the drum comes from, you know. 
already knowing that I have that soul connection to Mama Africa. But that was like a and you know, going forward, more growing up you now, um, coming out of school, you know, quitting and um, pursuing music. It's like I want to come forward to my spiritual, you know, um, heights and myths like that I used to, you know, penetrate me. But so I went into a meditation and showed me that, you know, my my roots coming from Africa. You know, I have to look for my spirituality in Africa. You know, and so you know, I wanted to know who is the father of Africa. And it's like as soon as I have that that question in my mind, it's like I have the answer in my mind at the same time. And so I just start to just learn as much about his majesty as I can and and I just just you know within myself like this is this is why I'm here, you know. This is why I'm here. this is it, my my mission and my work to the works of his majesty and the call of his majesty. And it was Rastafari from that moment forward and ever ever more. Yeah, so it was that was for me my my greatest spiritual revelation in life, you know, was learning my connection to his majesty. You know, spiritually, physically, mentally, every sense, you know. Yeah. So everywhere I, I go on on this journey, you know, touring the world, it's like I always book up on this place where his majesty was, you know. Or like people that he met, you know, and it's like he's just showing me like, you know, <laughs> everywhere I'm going is where I'm supposed to be going. Uh, when I go to Mexico, the Virgins they, they take me to, you know, the place where his majesty he was in Mexico in the city, I uh, say a subway station, Ethiopia subway. And then, you know, you go in there and you see plaques of his majesty and talks about the history of his majesty and his visit in Mexico. And he took me to the pyramids where he climbed and, and prayed for the, for, the, for the country of Mexico, I think. You know, and even in, in England, at the house of his majesty, you know, um, when I when I really start to learn more about you know the, the place that His Majesty lived in in England in exile and how it's open for ones and ones to come and learn about His Majesty's time in in England, I say I'm going. <laughs> you know, like all questions ask, I'm going. And I I, look, I want you show in that city, get you with get through with two two shows in that city to just ensure that. I'm going to the house of his majesty, which is Fairfield House in Bath. And it's life changing, you know, like going into his majesty's bedroom, just pure, you know, like the vibes and feelings, you know, of just like overwhelming, you know, joy and, you know, also the pain that his majesty was going through and Ethiopia was going through at the time, you know, just the, the the gratitude for the preservation of, of the legacy and it's just so much. It's it's truly, you know, a revelation in my life, Rastafari, and will always be. I don't hear you now, sister. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Sorry, I was on mute there. I was uh, trying to mute up my kid, my cat, making noise here. But I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, your world tour, and uh, thank you for sharing uh, that revelations. You know, the revelations that you've had and things you've experienced, and what makes you who you are right now, and where you are in your own personal spiritual journey. Uh, power on top of power. For that and yeah tell me tell me about your world tour how was that for you performing um you know i saw the video clip as well on your youtube in kenya 
you know, the vibe was amazing. It looks like they were loving you. Um, how did that feel? How did, you know, you went from, you were in Toronto, then Hawaii, uh, you know, Africa, uh, quite a few countries, I believe, and Jamaica. So how, how has that been for you? Um, yeah, it's been, it's been amazing, you know, but it's been, it's been a long time um, coming and manifesting, you know, and, and building towards this, you know. And, yeah, um, 20, 2021, I got the opportunity to get back on the road again. I started to go from, yeah, from Vancouver, Toronto, New York, from Hawaii, Mexico, England, and then Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, Lesotho, Swaziland, and Mozambique, and then how far and from Jamaica. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a real blessing. Um, it's been an honor, you know. It's been it's been just so many things, you know, so many ups and downs, you know. There's there's tribulations along the way, but I just hold firm on the journey still, you know, and. Yeah, it's very, very fulfilling and rewarding in the sense that around the world, you know, I, I, I know that I have, I have changed people's lives for the better, you know, in terms of just coming with the, the music and the vibes that, that they need to be uplifted and enlightened and all these things, you know, and it's, 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 it's so, it's so rewarding in a sense that it, like, Sometimes it's I can't even I can't even watch nothing else. Like it's just it's just how much people can I actually affect? Like you know how much people can I actually you know uplift and you know bring this vibe to? That's like the main. Thing. Oh, that's you want to affect people? Is change people's lives? Put some you know positive movements in the air and then make it a worldwide movement uh, i mean geez it must have been incredible just to see how other people live you know in different parts of the world it's totally can be a culture shock and you could be for me i'm i'm thinking about leaving canada and finding somewhere else to live because there's so many options so many beautiful countries especially in africa um so what, where was your favorite place that you performed um, yeah, just real quick, and that um, that in itself has been part of what has not so much like changed people's lives, but let's say inspire people, you know. And that's been so much of what has inspired ones and ones on this journey is the fact that I'm doing this, I'm on this journey, and there's you know there's nothing holding me back, and there's nothing <laughs> even necessarily you know, um, pushing forward other than myself, you know. I have, ones and ones, you know, of course, you know, give me strength along the way, support along the way, um, a great fan base, you know, an amazing fan base, but at the same time, I mean, it's like one hand at this point still, you know, and so <clears throat> that's, it, it's, I know a lot of ones and ones have, have been inspired and motivated just from that in itself, and they tell me, you know, like, yeah, this is what I've been doing, you know. I'm watching you, you, and it's making you want to, you know, and, you know, especially at my bridging for our musicians, you know, in different parts of the world, and they're really, they're really pushing, you know, you know, once I see that, you know, how far I've come, you know, and how far I've gone in such a short span of time. It feels good. It feels good. It's a great feeling to be able to touch people and, change people's lives especially through music or whatever art form that you know you decide to express yourself um it's a gift to be able to do that especially do it on that scale uh there's so many people that you met and i'm sure those relationships um have changed not only you but them as well tell, tell me about hawaii like how was that i know you shot a music video there I believe it was Propaganda, correct? Yeah. The most recent music video you just released. Yeah. Yeah. So Propaganda, yeah, in, in Maui, Hawaii, was shot by uh, Virginia Angelo. Um, 
Moving Maui 808 on Instagram. You can check him out. Um, really, I got that connection to my, my sister, my virgin wife, you know. And my virgin and my sister, they, they're, um, they're, you know, they're Trinidadian, living in, in Maui. And um, singer, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, my virgin and, and his wife is singing with, with him. And their fa- them and their family, they, they really just took me in and, you know, just gave me so much love. And we did so much work together. And, you know, I brought my virgin to another island in Hawaii to do uh, a show out there with a, a, a band out there. You know, he never, you know, he's never been to that island and got that experience before, you know. So, you know, it, it, we, it was like an iron sharp and iron thing. And it was a really great connection and bond we built. And, you know, I have family there. You know, we have us now to them. And we have other ones and ones that we play with out there, connections that we make. Our graduate from Guyana. Suleiman, big up Suleiman and the percussion, you know, yeah. Other bass and drums and you know, from other parts of Africa, Caribbean, Hawaii, you know. So, yeah, it's a real blessing. Yes, everybody check out the visuals for Propaganda on the YouTube, on Sid Perry Radio YouTube page. It's a beautiful background and the lyrics I hear, I see Joy Pierre in the comment section saying the lyrics are fire um yeah i also shared it on the at roots right you have twitter page as well if you guys don't know already i've curated a sid perry playlist i will be playing all of the tracks we are discussing and some other tracks like crime free jamaica so following our reasoning tonight i'll be playing a hour-long sid perry uh mix so the, the radio people can get to know your music even more. They can take in all the tracks back to back to back. It's a one hour long uh, mix. So you guys will be, you know, you'll be able to take in all the music because I can't play out the music in full, in full here on Instagram. So I love to do that following our reasoning tonight. So you got to stick around. If you're on Instagram, you got to move over to the rootsreggiehub.com. Click on the listen live button right there and you guys can listen to Sid Perry all the music back to back to back right here coming up after this on Melody Mondays so yeah I love it it's where I got red EP songs I got gold EP songs and and more so bless up everybody that will be keeping it locked here and tuning in the message and propaganda like I love the actors I love how it was a film you know like a short film um that told a story as a storyteller you know i I love that and uh yeah tell me how what you think why do you think people have a hard time breaking breaking away from you know those ingrained religious beliefs um and sometimes they want you to convert you know to their religious beliefs they they try to argue their points and um put their belief systems as you know the right belief system how do you think people can break away from that? Well, how can, how, how can people break away from that? <laughs> you know, some people, I think it comes from trauma. You know? It was forced upon them by their parents, their grandparents. And, you know, so they're going to they're gonna force, they're looking for people to force it on too. You know, community, force it on their school, force it on their parents for but it comes like a form of oppression and so I think people need to start to first acknowledge that what it is you know if you choose that for yourself then that's one thing you know but if it's forced upon you and you know um, you don't comply and that comes with scrutiny and all kind of you know condemnation and you know, just oppression, you know, it's tiring, you know, so that's really what it is. And I think that's the only way it'll change for ones to see that as that's what it is, you know. But, um, you know, in Jamaica, especially, you know, it's a generational thing, you know. So, you know, more, more ones and ones can, can you know, relate if they are a you know, 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 
that's that's what it is, you know, and that that's what it was for 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 so many of us. You know, we have most of us who are just only Ross in our family. We have a family member or several family members who condemned us, maybe almost cut us off, maybe they cut us off or worse, you know. <laughs> Yes, um, it's definitely, it is definitely something that, you, especially if you're from young and you grew up in a certain belief system, it is sometimes a lot and you definitely have to look within. And I like that, you know, you shared your perspective on that. I agree with a lot of that. Bless up everyone that's still coming in here on the Instagram, joining us late. Ah, but you're right on time still. <laughs> How do you approach how do you approach challenges at work? You know, sometimes maybe you might have a maybe a, a block, creative creative block, or maybe it's you know, like some something that you're learning that you're trying to, you know, master with work. It could be anything. Obstacle it could be people that are trying to get be an obstacle for you to get somewhere. How do you, you know, overcome challenges that might arise? Well, you know, every challenge is different still. Basically, through everything I go through, I just keep in mind that I'm on a mission, and this mission is a very serious mission. And I'm here for a reason. Fulfilling that every day. You know, so, you know, I'm constantly um, reminded by, by that, you know, that fact you know, along the journey. Because so many things that, so many obstacles that I've, I've been faced with, like, you know, most people would just turn around and go back home. But, you know, I keep going forward. And, you know, it keeps revealing to me more and more that this is the direction that I'm about to go in. And I'm, I'm just answering the call. You know, I'm just, you know, a right to the, like, what I know to be my, you know. see some questions uh you're saying the question box isn't working i see that so you have a question on the screen here i'm going to take your question joy do you do you said do you have daydreams have you ever daydreamed and if so is that how you channel your music uh, too much about um, daydream necessary but um you know, I, I have a meditation and you know, I, I see things here yeah, in, in my my sleep and in, in my waking state, you know, that, that yeah, it comes to me visions, you know. And so I, I embrace them, you know. I don't avoid them. I take notice of them, be very observant and, you know, try and learn as much as I can from what I'm, what's being revealed to me. You know, that was a good question. I like that question. Like it's like divine inspiration, you know? You might just, <laughs> you might be holding a meds and you just get, you know, some download coming from your antennae. <laughs> Big up everybody here. Big up Sammy coming in. Tell me what you know the past year has taught you. Obviously, a lot of us have went through a lot of changes and growth and surprises from 2020 to 2022, and now we're into 2023. Tell me something that you specifically learned, or um, you know, something that you're gonna taking into the new year, different approach. Well, one thing I learned in 2022 was that mind and the power of manifestation within myself, within anyone is uh, conscious to it and uh, active with it. It's limitless. You know? In 2022, um, I accomplished far more than I would have even imagined, you know, just by being willing 
enabled, you know. I'm just putting my mind to to use, you know, like in the sense that like removing any any restriction within my perception that I can achieve to how far I can go, all these things. And that's what they around the world, you know, and made it possible to perform in front of thousands and all these things. Because as I said, most of the ones that I know, to be honest, they would have turned around and went home when they were told certain things and were faced with certain things, you know, either immigration or um, just obstacles along the way, you know. And so, yeah, that was never an option for me. I never, I don't, I, I never, you know, I never chose that option myself first. But I know most people who have, you know, especially knowing you're in a part of the world, you don't know nothing, you don't know anyone, you don't have any money maybe in certain situations. In certain situations, you don't speak the language, you know, they don't understand you, you know. So just all these challenges along the way. And you're going to a place where you don't know anyone. For the first time, and so you don't have the support. But you know, maybe every time you have money, but you don't, you don't, you don't have the support like a community or anything. You know? So it's just different ups and downs along the way, you know. And you know, like I said, um, you know, most most ones, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't go certain places without knowing people or all these things, you know. But like I said, when you know you're, you're, you're here to do something, you do it if, if you're truly called. You know. so, but going forward this year differently, what I'm going to do different is I'm more based at home. And when I get certain works to go to certain places, I go. And in between the works, I come home. And yeah, switch up the, the operation of things, more focused on, you know, more content, more marketing, all these things, you know, and reach new people more, you know, um, you know, I guess from a, from a digital sense, you know, in the sense mm-hmm. that more, more, more releases, you know, and more, more content circulating online, so, you know, more people tune, being able to tune in online, and as I say, coming home in between, between gigs and jobs because two two years on the road is too much, you know. So. <laughs> I totally understand that. Now you can, you know, put your feet up a little bit and obviously you get to work and put out some put up some content and it's a digital world. You know, you can just about do anything, um, and be anywhere uh in the digital age and I'm looking forward to seeing what you have in store for us coming up um yeah and i'm sure like the travel i love traveling don't get me wrong but uh, i'm sure it does it just sometimes i go on a vacation and they come back and i need another vacation so or especially when it's not even a vacation too like you're on a mission you're this is a you know these are some different works you're on you know so it's it's interesting but thank you for sharing that sharing your vision there I do want to talk about, you know, Crime Free Jamaica. It's an important message. It's an important song, especially nowadays. Um, We want to see Crime Free Jamaica. We want to see, you know, that for everyone living there, old, young, especially the young, you know, our children are our future. Tell me about the video and what was that like making the music video for that song? And yeah, what inspired it? Being in Jamaica too, that's important. You're there now. Well, what what inspired Crime Free Jamaica was really just really from me as as a youth really starting to become more and more aware through the, throughout the years of the corruption and oppression that really holds us down as Jamaican people. You know. And how that is through the systematic oppression and deprivation um, made opportunity and truly an opportunity so scarce how that has affected, you know, ones and ones like in, in the ghettos, for 
camp or you know, in, in places where there's just no opportunity. So people return into, um, sorry, uh, resort to and turn to things that they wouldn't necessarily otherwise, or they definitely wouldn't have otherwise, actually. You know. And yeah, so it just became like, you know, it was, it was, it, it made me sad as a child. You know. To learn more about you know what was going on behind the scenes, you know. and so Crime Free Jamaica has been um, an intention, a vision of mine from that time. You know, something I want to see from as far back as I can remember. Such an important, important song. I want everyone to check out the video, Crime Free Jamaica. Keep Jamaica crime free. Keep our children safe. Keep our women safe. Don't kill each other. Don't kill your brothers. And yeah, you know, be nice to each and every one that you come across. Positive vibes and vibrations. That song is big. Please check out that track as well on Sid Perry's YouTube page. Sid, tell me something most, most people don't know about you or would never in a million years Yes. That's a good question. I don't. Maybe some. Maybe I mean some people know this about me, but not everyone. Maybe I don't. So I don't eat no meat. I don't eat no dairy. I don't eat nothing that doesn't come from a plant. I only eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains. And that's mm. All right. So that's like, that's like our almost like a raw terrian. Well, I cook food. But Are you I a raw terrian or do you cook, you can cook your vegetables? I cook, I eat cooked food, but I don't eat um, anything that doesn't come from a plant to begin with, you know? So it has to be yeah, from, a, from a tree, from a bush, from the ground. From the sea, the sea vegetable, the sea plant, you know, no form of animal yeah. or anything that comes from. I love it. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I didn't know that about you, so I learned something new. I learned a lot of new things tonight, reasoning with you. And of course, I'll be playing a Sid Perry mix coming up right now following our reasoning tonight Sid, is there anything else that you want people to look out for any events coming up um and where can they find you spell it out for them for the radio listeners um you know spell your um your social media tags where can they find you yeah, so online i'm sid perry reggae s-y-d-p-e-r-r-y reggae r-e-g-g-a yeah you can find me um you need to reach me, Sid Perry Reggae at gmail.com for bookings, you know. Um, yeah, basically, look out for the Green EP, any music videos that I got coming up. You might as well subscribe to the YouTube channel now <laughs> so that you get the update, you know. And you can check out the six that are already out, out the road. Spotify, iTunes, anything you can think of, you can find me. S-Y-D-P-E-R-R-Y. Sid Perry. Sid Perry Reggae. Thank you so much, Sid. Thank you, everyone that came through the Instagram today. Thank you to all the radio listeners, the Twitter people. I see you. Bless up everybody that's been, you know, taking in the, the Instagram lives every Monday here on Melody Mondays. I'm Shana McCullough signing out with Sid Perry. Thank you so much, Sid. Thanks. Much love, Thanks. much blessings, King, always. Likewise. Big, big up yourself, you know? Yeah, give thanks. Give thanks. It's an honor. Thank you. Blessed love, everybody. Have a great night. Yeah, I'll see you next everybody. week. Bye, Sid. <laughs> enjoy Jamaica. And, you know, enjoy. Get, yeah. your, get your nature on. Get your food on. And your music, of course. I'm looking forward to the Green EP. Soon come. Bless up, everybody. The Reggae Family Worldwide. Have a great night. Bye, Sid. <laughs>